So Ian, what have we got here? A kind of experiment is the, is the first way to put it, but it, what we've tried to do is, is um, look at some evidence for an Anglo-Saxon, a very small Anglo-Saxon dwelling, originally from the um, 6th or 7th century, and just try to see what may have been above ground. Originally, the archaeologists, all they found was a, a pit in the ground, a roughly rectangular pit in the ground with, with two holes at the ends, which looked like post holes. And so what we've had to do is then guess what everything might be above ground. So what we've done, as you'll see if you go inside, is put two uprights in, a horizontal ridge, then a roof structure on top of that, and, on, and, and then finally the roofing here we've been playing with or looking at is, is uh, shingles. So this is a reconstruction. When, when did you build it? This is a, about 10 or 11 years old now. Um, I think it's 1999 that we constructed it. Uh, the, the shingles are made of chestnut, which is uh, fantastic, we're full of tannin, and that's meant that they've, they've survived all this time. So these are the shingles? They're shingles. How do you make those? Now these wooden roof tiles, there's, there's actually quite a, uh, a few different ways of um, making them, but they're, they, they can be sawn, and a modern shingle will be sawn, but if you want a really long-lasting shingle that's more authentic, you're going to split it using a tool called a fro. And there are various ways of doing that. You can you can split radially, or there are other ways of splitting. You, you split across the grain, and these are split across the grain. Is this the sort of thing someone could make for a shed roof or a shelter roof in their own woodland? Yeah, I think they probably could. Um, the thing with this is that there's about 750 shingles on them, and each one's going to take you, you know, a few minutes to make. So you're looking at quite a bit of time to make the shingles if you make them yourselves. But the the, the, the flip side of that is it's very rewarding, and those shingles will be handmade, and they'll all be different as they are on here and they'll give it this lovely, um, this lovely feel that this yes. has got. It looks very much in keeping um, with the woodland. Can we go inside and see how they're fixed? Yeah, sure, of course we can. So, um, in this house, what we've done is basically tie on um, battens to the, to the roof um, at fairly even incidence here, it looks like about eight or nine inches. And then each shingle then had a, two holes drilled in and two pegs put in. So they're just hung rather like a roof tile uh, over these battens. And that's basically the only way that they're held on. And they've been like that for, as I say, for 10 years. There are other ways of building these roofs. If you were to build it like a hurdle, so a completely wattled structure, you could then um, put maybe a single peg in each shingle and then force the peg through the the wattled roof and then it's pinned in place and that we've also done on some buildings and they, they, they sit there very nicely too. And you've used hazel have you for the, are these called spars? Um, these battens are, are hazel, yes that's right they're split hazel. split hazel, but you could use basically any wood, you could use round wood but split wood just means you put a flat surface on these rafters. Shing wooden shingles are things that can, well, we're pretty sure are shingles have been found in archaeological sites in London um, so we know that they, they have got shingles. Shingles are actually quite a high status roofing material, more likely in a woodland, or not a woodland, on an original building they would have some sort of thatch, reed or straw. In a woodland environment these shingles actually last much better than, than thatching straw as we found out in this wood here. And our work basically is working with volunteers, often with um, um, unemployed people too and what we're doing is um, archaeological and heritage interpretation and educational projects so we work in schools we do events like this wood fair um, and all sorts of other projects sometimes houses like this will build um, in a school with all the children in the school and the wonderful thing about a house like this is that the, the children right from reception through to say year seven if it's a primary school all of them can have some part in to play in building the house which is really exciting for us and them I think. So Ian, this house is built above a, a dugout, a hole. Why, why did the Saxons build like that? It's quite common, certainly in the early uh, Saxon period, for them to build even these very small buildings above holes. Um, maybe it's giving them more height inside the building without having to build a wall. Perhaps it's creating an environment that's particularly good for the activity they're going to take place. There's a suggestion that a lot of these things are weaving huts. It, maybe it, it keeps a, a good high humidity in the building. Uh, maybe they're just being used as storage. I know that um, um, clamps of potatoes in a very similar shape are found in some of the Scottish Isles. So the short answer is we don't really know, but it could be one of those things. But the, And it can also just be a purely cultural thing. We know that these kind of buildings are also found in Saxony, in northern Germany, where obviously Anglo-Saxons are Saxons are coming from, so they're probably bringing cultural ideas with them. It may just be as simple as that.